Aaron with the New Buzz Farm. Um, it is March 11th and uh, I've got a big project going on. I've talked a little bit about it on my website. Um, we're planting a polyculture orchard and uh, as you can see it's still uh, pretty cold outside uh, and but we're today we're drilling holes in the ground. I wanted to kind of take you through uh, how I laid things out and uh, where I'm putting my trees and, and uh, the post hole digger I'm using. It's all pretty good stuff. So here we go. All right, so the whole footprint of this orchard is going to be about uh, an acre uh, right now. And I plan on expanding it and diversifying it as we go. Uh, so, so you can see I've actually got trees that line my driveway. It's honey locusts and uh, thornless honey locusts and oak trees. Um, and eventually these, these here on the, the uh, side of the driveway I'm facing now are going to probably end up coming out. Uh, we'll see how it goes with uh, light and shading um, because these are actually on the north side of, of the orchard itself. So um, now this is what I've done here. Um, the way I laid this orchard out, uh, uh, well first of all you can see I've marked where every tree is going to go with flags um, and that makes it easier while I'm uh, digging holes if I have it all mapped out already, I can just pull a flag and dig a hole, pull a flag, dig a hole. And I'll limit my time. I have to rent this tool right here. This is my uh, post hole digger that I got from Mower Medic in McPherson, Kansas. And uh, it's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, the motor's separate from the digger. If you guys have ever seen or, or used one of the, the post hole diggers where the motor's attached, they're real torquey and jumpy and really wear you out and they're really hard to use. This thing, uh, here you've got a hose. This is your transfer tube for your, uh, from, for the torque from the motor, uh, or from the engine to the uh, auger itself. And then this is a stabilizer bar, which is really nice. Uh, basically, when you operate this thing, you can, you can let the auger do all the work. You can hold onto the thing with one hand because the stabilizer bar uh, takes all the torque out of it. So, and this thing, packs up, um, breaks down, and will fit into a, a, a small car even. Um, so it's really, really nice piece of equipment. And if you can get a hold of one of these, I would definitely recommend it uh, for, for these applications. This one's called the Little Beaver. But anyway, uh, the spacing in my orchard, uh, all of my trees, all of my rows are spaced um, time and a half times the height of what's of the tree from the east to the west um, and then anything that would be less than 15 feet is just turned to 15 feet that way we'll be able to access uh, with vehicles and whatnot um, as you can see this is uh, one of the rows that I already got dug here uh, that post hole digger I probably did this entire row in about 10 minutes so it's extremely efficient. If you were to dig this by hand, I mean, just one of the, just one row like this in this heavy clay soil might take you all day long. So, uh, it, like I said, that that's definitely worth the money to rent the tool. Um, and if you're going to use it all the time, maybe even buy the tool. Um, one thing to note: you can see, looking down into the hole, it, uh, the disadvantage to like a post hole digger or an auger, especially these clay soils, is you kind of make a seal. Uh, spinning that auger inside that hole um, so when I go to plant I'll actually take like a, the, gar or the hand garden rake or the garden forks and I'm gonna drag the insides of this hole really deep before I put my trees in um, and hopefully that will and in the bottom as well I'm gonna poke some holes in the bottom as well hopefully that'll kind of uh, prevent this hole from becoming sealed up and, and trapping water basically like a big vase I've heard uh, people have dealt with that, um, especially in clay soils like what I've got here. So, um, uh, what's going into the orchard? It's going to be 12 uh, Kansas native uh, fruit and nut varieties. Um, and then the idea is I'm probably going to lose, you know, a, a portion of my trees. And as I lose trees, uh, those losses will be an opportunity for diversification. So, uh, uh, 
I will bring in different species, probably a lot of selected uh, fruit cultivars um, to fill in gaps. And I'll do that according to the height uh, of what's supposed to grow there. So I'll put them in a, in a height, a row with a height that matches. Um, going back to that row spacing thing, the reason for it, you know, the time and a half row spacing, um, that's a pretty, that's a pretty standard for an orchard. Um, the idea is I'd, I'd like to eventually graze sheep and chickens, um, between these rows, uh, once everything's well established. Um, and that'll help with my, um, weed and grass control and, and then fertilization as well. But this, this, uh, they're not spaced far enough where at, at full size, I, I mean, I probably won't be able to graze everything. It's probably going to shade too much of the weeds out, uh, or too much of the grass out, and I won't have real good pasture underneath it. That's okay. This is such a small, uh, small orchard. Um, anyway, uh, I'm trying to make it low maintenance. That's why I, I chose the native fruit varieties, or, uh, and, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm hoping that at full height, the trees on the west in the heat of the day will start to shade the trees on the east um, in the hottest parts of the day, five, five and six o'clock in the middle of the summer. And that'll hopefully cut down on my water and my plant stress as well. Uh, that's another reason I did the spacing the way I did. Um, I'm kind of rambling here. I realize this video is getting a little long. And, uh, but anyway. If you guys have any questions about what I'm doing uh, or anything else, let me know. I'm going to keep posting updates, um, showing the progress I've made. Uh, have a good one, guys.